Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all this morning. Oh, yeah, it's good to be with you on another Wednesday, another hump day Wednesday, little grace midweek, where we've decided today again to give you a little summertime view while we can. Oh, summer's such a nice thing. We get a little tired of the heat, but uh, it is summertime. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, all right, it looks like we are set on go. It's been kind of a weird thing with the phone this morning. It's like I got this big screen phone, and I'm like on half of it. And then when I touch live, I seem to go, it uh, seemed to fill up the screen. So I don't know, and it gave me kind of a countdown. I'm thinking, I don't know about these new things. Just leave things like they are. Hi, Barb, nice to see you. Janice, good to see you. God bless you this morning. We are coming to you live from St. Joe, Missouri with a little devotion. I think somebody needs this this morning. I honestly feel that. Mary, good to see you this morning. I seek the Lord always in the morning. Ask for his anointing because whether you know it or not, I can do this. Hi, Harrison. Nice to see you, Tom. Thomas, I hope you're doing well. I can't do this on my own. So I seek the Lord for his anointing and his, and his uplifting. And I felt like the Lord. Hello, Bullers. I felt like the Lord said this morning. Somebody needs this this morning. It might not be for all. Somebody needs this. We're talking about wisdom this morning. Somebody needs wisdom this morning. Maybe you've got a situation, an issue that needs to be decided up, upon. Oh, that's, we can handle that, really. Let's talk about wisdom. Let's talk about the importance. Hi, Deb. Nice to see you, Joyce. God bless you. We're talking about wisdom. How do you get it? How do you keep it? Hi, Wendy. Good to see you this morning. The Bible tells us exactly how to get wisdom. I sent this out this week. I entitled the uh, devotion this week, Where Can I Find Wisdom? Where do you go for wisdom? I just need, hi Wanda, I just need a good dose of wisdom. Sherry hollered out to me when I sent it to her to post online. She hollered out and said, I need a double portion of that. I need a large portion of that. So we're, hi Barb, good to see you. And, uh, we're praying this morning that God would just supersize. We just praying God would just supersize wisdom for her. When you seek the Lord, I don't believe he gives. Ah, that's just enough. He will overflow you with it. Somebody needs the message this morning. I'm confident of that. It's talking about wisdom. How do you get it? Where do you go for it? How small can things be before we ask the Lord for wisdom? Does it have to be? Oh, that's not big enough to bother the Lord. He's busy elsewhere. He's over in China working on who knows what. Hi, Alice. Nice to see you. Really? Well, let's talk about that a little bit this morning. We're coming to you last week. As you recall, when I left you, left you last week, we were in James, the first chapter. I think it was like verses 2 through 4, and we're going to pick right up there in verses 5 through 8. I said last week, we might be here for a while. We might be, because it's James. I'm telling you, this book of James, man, it's in it. You want to learn how to live life, boy, it's in it. Uh, be careful, because it'll step on you a little bit. Hi, Jeannie. Good to see you this morning. I'm going to take one more drink of the Joe, and then we're going to get going. One more drink. One more. Once again, a little summertime view. Because we can. Because it is summertime, and we miss summer when it's over. All right. Good to see all of you this morning. So we are going to get started. A little Grace Midweek where we pledge to get you over the hump. Whatever that hump is that you're going through. Let's, let's go. James chapter 1. Verses 5 through 8 says this, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all, listen to this, liberally. Wow. <laughs> Generously, some versions say. Who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. That goes for man or woman, by the way, in there. That goes for all of us. Uh, they are a double-minded person when they ask without believing. The topic of wisdom. Well, who needs wisdom this morning? I believe, as I sought the Lord this morning, he said there is there are people that need to talk, hear about the topic of wisdom. And I'm trusting in that. 
I want to say to you this morning the topic of wisdom. My goodness, we spend a lifetime trying to get wisdom, don't we? We spend a lifetime training kids and correcting kids and saying, don't do that, do this. And oh my goodness, everything we do is in correcting and, and bringing these kids to where they can be self-supporting and able to take care of themselves. We spend our whole lives, we seek the wisdom we need to function in the world that we live in. Ah, oh, the wisdom to function in the world. We start them out in preschool. How can we be in an advanced preschool class? Because I want my kid to hit kindergarten. I want him to hit kindergarten with uh, ground running, where he already knows his alphabet, for crying out loud. And because uh, we want that. So we start them in preschool, they move into kindergarten, we want them to be advanced. And they continue 12 years of elementary and high school education. And after the fact, you know what? In my day, very few went on. Today, many go on somewhere. Maybe it's a trade school. Maybe it's, it's a college someplace. Maybe it's a community college. Maybe it's a school of some sort. But they move forward with more years. Why? Because they want that college degree. They want that piece of paper that they can maneuver successfully throughout this life. The pitfalls, the twists and turns in this life that they're going to encounter. We know they're going to encounter that. And we want them to be able to maneuver that. To dodge bullets from the world and things like that. We want them to bounce like a pinball machine. Bounce from one thing to the other. And safely do so. We do that so they can have everything they need. They need that degree because they need wisdom. They need knowledge. They need to, they need to understand that. I want to say to you, and I should have highlighted this in black because this may be the most important thing I say today, and that is the wise person will understand that the fear of the Lord is the most important thing that you can have. You can have all of that stuff. You can know that textbook cover to cover. You can know it, you can read it, you can take the test and pass the test. If you don't know this, I'm telling you right now, the Bible says you are a fool. The wise person will understand the fear of the Lord is the most important thing you can have. Let that sink in. The fear of the Lord is the most important thing you could possibly have. You have all the other, we've, we've, we've garnered all of the other in successes. But if you forget that, you cannot be a wise person. The scripture says this. Listen to this. This is amazing to me. The foolishness of God. As if God had any foolishness at all. The foolishness of God is wiser than man. That's what 1 Corinthians 1.25. I even read that this morning in my devotion. The foolishness of God is wiser than man. And the weakness of God, as if there was any weakness, is stronger than man. That's just like the writer saying he's got more strength in his little finger than you got in your whole body. And we know that is even exaggerated. Even it takes nothing from the Lord to be wiser than us. He has it all. That is something we need to understand. The foolishness of God is wiser than man. The Bible has a lot to say about true wisdom. You'll find wisdom talked about in this book from cover to cover. You'll find wisdom talked about seek after wisdom. How do you get it? When I read 1 Kings, you learn a lot about King Solomon. Now, a lot of you know lots about King Solomon. Now, this man has got to follow this king by the name of David, who was a popular king. Very few kings, if you read the, throughout the Bible, very few kings, the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, uh, always seem to be separated from the rest of Israel because they couldn't agree on a king. David was the one that united him. It united everything underneath one king. And this and his son Solomon, he has the chore of following a very successful king, his dad David. Oh, there's fun in that. I'm telling you what. Following someone in life who's absolutely loved by all, who is, is, uh, is revered by all, is a difficult task. Now, we enjoy that because we are thankful for the table that they've set for us. We are thankful for what they have built. That I, I, I prayed with Bill Robertson yesterday, and I, I told Bill, I, I, I'm praying for Bill and Brenda, and I ask that you keep Brenda, Brenda in your prayers for the Lord's strength. The Lord's doing some good things there. But I told Bill, you laid the, the tracks. You laid the tracks that I'm running on. I get to be a pastor because of the foundation of the tracks that you laid. I, I get to run on that. I'm following what you laid. And uh, what a good man, Bill Robertson. 
the tracks that Bill and Brenda laid here, I get to run on them. And it's like, this is a smooth track. This is a good track. Because people like him came before me and built the track. They built the track here. I said all of that to say we're thankful for those who build the table that uh, they've set for us. Uh, but you know what? There's generally no direction to go from following a popular person than down. It, when you follow the most important and popular person you could possibly follow, there's only one way you could possibly go, and that's down. And Solomon understood the complexity of that situation. He understood that situation, and he sought the Lord. And he said, Lord, I need you. I can't do this. I'm a young boy. I can't follow somebody like David. How do I do that? And the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. You can read it in 1 Kings for yourself. The Lord appeared to him, and he promised to give Solomon. I hear your cry, young man. I'll give you anything you want. You name it, and it's yours. Buddy, you just name it. I don't care what it is. You name it. Whatever you want. What is it? What is it you want? You want wealth? Oh, I'll give you plenty of that. You want wealth? You just say the word. I'll. You want prosperity? Oh, prosperity. That's what you want. You want prosperity. You want, oh, you want a long life. Let me lay that on. I'll lay you out till you're a hundred and some odd years old. And not only a long life, but a healthy life. Is that what you want? Oh, I know what you want. You want victory over your enemies. You want, you want superiority over your enemies. That's what you want. Okay, here goes. You're about to get it. Anything you want, you just tell me, and it's yours. Instead, Solomon asked the Lord. Now, hear me this morning. Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom and an understanding mind because he saw these people. What benefit is it if I have all the prosperity in the world? What benefit is it to me if I have you know, strength over my enemies? If these people needing a shepherd don't have one, what benefit is there in this? And that request... So he prayed for wisdom and understanding. That's what I want, so that your people can be happy. And the, that request so pleased the Lord that he gave Solomon all of the above. You can read it for yourself. 1 Kings 4.29, write that down. 1 Kings 4.29 says this, God gave Solomon very great wisdom and understanding and knowledge as vast as the sands on the seashore. He, now that's wisdom. He gave him wisdom and knowledge as vast as the sands on the seashore. He was so thrilled by your request. Your request, request blesses me. I can't say the word. Your request blesses me so much. I'm going to give you that, 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 and everything else you didn't ask for. I believe with all my heart it blesses the Lord when we ask for wisdom. I believe in whatever situation and circumstance you're in. When we ask the Lord for wisdom, I believe it blesses him. To think that we would allow him to be part of our situation, our concerns, our situation that we don't just do and then ask the Lord to bail us out, from, but from the very beginning. Lord, would you give me wisdom to know how to work in this situation? If you ask God for wisdom, trusting fully in him, I promise you he will provide it. He will do so. If you ask him for wisdom, he will not sit there and say, I don't believe so this time. He will bless you with wisdom if you seek the Lord with all your heart. I want the wisdom of the Lord. I don't want to know what's wise, what the wise people in this world says. I don't know what want to know what this guy says. Oh, I follow this guy. What does he say? I don't want to know that, Lord. I want to know what you say. I want to know what you say. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than all of them put together. The Bible says you don't have. Why? Because you don't ask for. The Bible tells us that. You don't have because you don't ask for it. That's in this same book of James 4 too. I showed you, but told you it was a good book. You don't have it because you don't ask for it. Can you imagine one day getting to heaven and say, God, why didn't you give me this? The one question I have for you is, why didn't you give me that? And the Lord says, um, maybe because you didn't ask for it. What? I didn't ask for it. You mean I did everything else except ask you for it? I tried with all my abilities, but I never asked you for it. You didn't get it because you didn't ask for it. Now, hear me in this. I have found myself many times asking the Lord to supply wisdom for various issues in, and items in my life. I have asked for it over and over and over. Oh, but you're such a wise person. You've made such... I'm nothing. I'm telling you, I can't do this devotion. I can't do this devotion without saying to the Lord, I got nothing here, Lord. I need it from you. I need wisdom from the Lord in absolutely everything I do. 
whether it's business dealings. Maybe you find yourself in business and you're finding yourself into a situation and you need wisdom from the Lord. I'm telling you, you ask the Lord for it. Before you seek the counsel, wise counsel of attorneys and whatever else and anything online, you seek the wisdom of the Lord. That's my that's my advice to you. You seek the wisdom of the Lord in your business dealings. Raising children? Oh my goodness, I have no idea how to, I don't know enough to come out. You know, when I had one child, I thought I was an expert. I thought I was the wisest child rearer there possibly was. And then I had two and I began to question. When I had three and my third daughter today, August the 10th, is Jordan's birthday. God bless you, Jordan. Happy birthday to you. My third daughter, by the time I had my third daughter, I swear to you, I thought I don't know anything because I need the wisdom of the Lord. You raising kids, you don't know what to do in this situation. How do I discipline in this situation? How do I work in this situation? You seek the wisdom of the Lord. Can I do that for little things like raising kids? Can you do that? I wouldn't do it without it. Signing a legal document. I'm about to sign a document that puts me on the line. I wouldn't sign that document without asking the Lord to be in it. I wouldn't sign that document without asking the Lord's wisdom. Either anything in your everyday life, everyday life, well, that's no big deal. God's not interested in that. God is interested in that. God is interested in that. And, and don't think anything is too small for me to bring to the Lord. The Lord is interested in that. The foolish individual will move forward without asking the Lord's guidance. He will move forward without asking the Lord's input. And then once the Lord gives that input and the Lord gives that leading and he will, the foolish person moves forward without following the Lord's leading. The wise person will seek the Lord in any and all things in life. James even tells us in these scripture verses, he even warns us, when we ask, we must not doubt. When you ask, I'm questioning what, don't you dare doubt the Lord. When you take it before the Lord, you need to understand that the Lord heard that request. That person that doubts, the Bible says, is like the ocean, never steady. We love watching the ocean come in. But you know what? I wouldn't build anything on it. I wouldn't go out there and build a house on the ocean. It's never steady. It's always shifting, especially on windy days. It crashes in, man. It crashes in. Warren Wills, Wearsby tell us, tells us this. I love reading stuff from Warren Wearsby. You know what the greatest enemy to, uh, to answered prayer is? You know what the greatest enemy is? Oh, well, hmm, let me think. You know what it is? He tells us it's doubt. It's doubting the Lord. That's the greatest enemy to answer prayer. Is it because we don't think he can do it for us? We don't think he's got the resources? Is it because why? That, that uh, why is it that we doubt the Lord? Do we don't think he cares enough for us? He doesn't care enough to do it. I'm here to tell you, all of those things are false. The Lord loves you. He cares for you and he wants to be a part of your life. The Lord loves you and he desires to be a part of your life. I want you to know, I put in the devotion, all the Lord wants in many times is a seat at the table. All he wants you to do is give him a seat at the table. You're sitting across from your wife, sometimes maybe your kids, and saying, what are we going to do about this situation? I'm wringing my hands. I don't know. We're sitting across the table and maybe sometimes even in tears. You know what? There's a chair right here. Lord, I want you to be a part of this table. Sometimes that's all he wants is to be involved in what well, the little things are like. Absolutely the little things, from little to large. Just give the Lord a seat at your table. And I can promise you this, hear this this morning. He will be a beacon in the midst of the storm you are going through. He will be a beacon and guide you safely home. He will be that lighthouse that you can see. What is that in the distance? It is so foggy. It is so stormy. I, I am tossed and turned. Wait a minute. What is that in the distance? Is that a light? You know what? I would say head toward the light. When you see the light, you see that little light shining through the trees? Head for the light this morning. God bless you this morning. Let me pray for you this morning. Father, I thank you for this morning, Lord, for, the, for your goodness. I thank you for who you are. I thank you, Lord, that you do give us wisdom when we need it, God, and we need it every day. Not just those once a year big circumstances. We need it every single day. And Father, for those things, I pray that each one of us will learn to seek you first, God. 
Seek you before all other things. Seek you first, in the middle, and even at the end. Seeking you to thank you because you have led us. And uh, Father, I pray that you give us the wisdom and the knowledge, the know-how to walk in the wisdom that you provide. Sometimes you provide wisdom by encouragement from someone else. Sometimes you provide, you provide wisdom because today we read it in the book. We read it in the book and you spoke to our hearts. Some days you provide it like that. Some days you provide it because you turn on the radio and some unknown person said something that, uh, could that be the Lord? Could it be the Lord? It could be provided in so many different ways. Maybe, you know what, it's not the fire, it's not the storm. Maybe it's the peace that says I have peace, that this is the direction that I need to be moving, that I just need to set. It's the peace of the Lord that we find the wisdom and understanding in. The Lord will provide it. He will not hide it. And we trust in you. I trust in you this morning, God. I pray that as they seek your wisdom, that even as Sherry said, God, give them a double portion. Give them a supersized portion of wisdom, more than they ever thought that they could retain, ask, or think. Pour it out on them this morning. Pour open the, open the windows of heaven and pour it out upon them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you this morning, this August the 10th. We say happy birthday to Jordan, and I say happy birthday to you. And anyone else whose birthday, I think it might be Diana Slauson's birthday. I think I kind of remember that. If it's not, never mind. But if it is, God bless you, Diana. Have a great day. All of you have a blessed day. I see it right there on the screen. Have a blessed day. Same to you. God bless you in all of your trials and tests and in dealings and everything you encounter. May the Lord bless you today. God bless you.